Okay, so we're going to talk about what happened over the course of the last week, just one week to another, last Friday to this Saturday. Um, and actually, a lot has happened. It's, it's pretty amazing how much has happened. So uh, when I go back and I look at uh, last Friday, that is, um, and what I'm doing is I'm going through the articles that I flagged and read um, or major themes that I've read and um, just trying to give you a sense of what we what has happened week over week. So uh, last Friday, the 26th of May, um, the West was trying to find a new model for security called the Porcupine model. This is maybe something different than NATO, but just building up Ukraine so strongly that they can't be attacked. I don't know that that's necessarily the best approach. I think they should be in NATO. I think uh, they're going to be so well versed in both Soviet and Western weapons that to not bring them into NATO is <laughs> almost foolish. Um, I understand the Russians' concern, but they have forfeited any right to have a concern at this point with the way that they behaved. The U.S. may provide attackums. They're actually considering it, and um, that's a long way. Now that they have storm shadows, uh, attackums aren't that big of a bridge. Um, Russia is selling Zelensky's Crimean penthouse apartment, uh, and the idea here was that they were going to be giving the proceeds to uh, wounded Russian uh, servicemen. Um, how many? How much of that money will actually go there, as opposed to the pockets of an oligarch, is yet to be determined. Russian strikes in medical facility in central Ukraine. I read this week that they struck like 900 so far since the beginning of the war. That's just absolutely terrible. Uh, lawmakers were pushing Biden to send long-range rockets beyond the attack of other long-range rockets, and Boris Johnson was meeting with Trump to discuss Ukraine. Now, I haven't heard anything as a follow-up of that, and Trump has not seemed to indicate any uh, additional turn in his thinking, but um, I'm sure that Boris was trying to convince him of taking the right path. Okay, Saturday, the 27th of May, Wagner mercenaries began withdrawing from Bakhmut. Remember, last week we had Pergozin's very weird um, ranting on that on, in his interview when I was trying to explain, like, he's not doing this just because he's being weird. He's actually doing this for a reason. Uh, Russia carries out a missile and drone strike, and Medvedev says the conflict will last for decades. So this drone strike thing, they've they've been doing like day after day, every other day or so, massive drone strikes. The International Bar Association on Saturday called for a special tribunal, and there's more of these that are coming. You're going to see uh, later on this week. We had another article about something along these lines. Uh, and Russia had attacked more, uh, there it is, there's the article I was talking about, more than 900 medical institutions since the invasion began. Now, you're not supposed to attack schools or residences or medical institutions, but this doesn't stop barbarians from acting like barbarians act. Sunday. Sunday was an interesting day. Lindsey's Graham, uh, Lindsey Graham, senator from South Carolina, uh, meets with um, Zelensky and talks about, "Hey, this is the best money we ever spent," and it made it made the Russians flip out. I mean, they were more upset with Lindsey Graham than they were with a drone strike in their own city in Moscow. Okay, so. Um, Ukrainian building uh, uh, onshore wind turbines, and they were they're actually building more onshore wind turbines than what England is in the same year. Now they have this m influx of money to do this, and the turbines are actually probably a good idea in the sense of it will continue to generate power when other things are shot down. But it it can ble be blown up too. It just depends on whether they want to. But the Ukrainians have this really interesting cultural characteristic that um, I've only observed uh, in since the war began. It's a, they, they tend to just, and Starsky pointed this out when I interviewed him, wherever they go, they tend to improve things. Like they can be in a dugout, in a shelter, in a, you know, dirt, and they, they're still trying to make it feel like an apartment and, and they keep working at it. And um, yeah, some of these will get blown up, but some of them will keep generating wind and power. So uh, the Russian ambassador says, we haven't started to act seriously. I, you know, I don't believe it when he says something like that, because like if you could have taken Ukraine by now, you would have taken Ukraine by now. Uh, Prigozhin says that the Kremlin is blanking him on state media, but that's Prigozhin talking. He's gotten plenty of press. Maybe. So, look, I said that he was Putin's mouthpiece in what he was saying. 
but he's Putin's mouthpiece as long as Putin wants him to be his mouthpiece. And when Putin, when the winds of the autocrat shift and he wants to favor this person as opposed to that person, he'll do it. So whether he's blanking him or not, or whether it's uh, just in his head or whether, I don't know. I don't know what to say, but people were using that as evidence that he is not he was not speaking as Putin's mouthpiece to attack the military leadership. And I don't I just don't see that. Uh, and I could be wrong. This is my theory. And I'm pointing out the difference between my theory and the hard evidence that I see. There's lo- another large drone attack on Kiev on Sunday. OK, Monday, Russia issues a warrant for Lindsey Graham. Like It's almost comical how bad these guys are at just like. They're just so offended by that. They're not offended by killing innocent women and children who didn't do anything to them in Ukraine, but they're offended by Lindsey Graham saying it's the best money we ever spent. Uh, 15th missile attack uh, on Ukraine in May on Monday. Zelensky uh, submits a list of sanctions to Iran. If I read that article correctly, this was a list of sanctions that were supposed to last for like 50 years for what Iran's doing in helping arm Russia. Uh, and as, as Iran does this, uh, Israel comes closer to Ukraine because they can't stand Iran. Iran is a mortal enemy. Erdogan wins re-election. That's important. Erdogan's not a friend of Ukraine. He's not a friend of Russia. He's a friend of Erdogan and Turkey. And he will, if you, you can trust him to follow his own interests. And some of those interests will align with Ukraine. And so like the, the port the the uh, grain deal that aligned and so where you can find that alignment you want to pursue it um ukraine will focus on the rep- uh, will be a, become a focus in the republican primaries and i think Rep- the republicans are having this conversation in the united states right now about okay so if you so the majority of the country supports ukraine most of the candidates except trump support ukraine in a significant full-throated kind of way desantis is a little less um whatever but so trump is on the other side of that equation now it's one over here and a bunch over here and so that could actually help trump win the primary but then you can't win the general if that's a big topic or if, obviously it's not the only topic but it, you're giving more reason to lose the general so they're having this conversation i know that they're having this conversation um rt lavrov says that uh, russian forces will react to f-16 deliveries by doing what <laughs> another missile strike you're already doing 15 so far this month uh putin signs a law allowing elections in russia occupied ukraine so it's it's fascinating how they have the garb of legality without being legal um so we see we had an official referendum well it wasn't really official but you have the cloak of the legality without it actually being legal you hold a gun to people's head and say vote for us and okay um but they they continue to do that as if that somehow justifies it lukashenko this was terrible lukashenko he's the president of uh Belarus promises nukes for countries that join Russia and Belarus. So Iran, Syria, whoever wants to join the party, whatever authoritarian dictators want to um, join with them, we'll we'll provide you some nuclear weapons. Now that's uh, enticing to a low-level dictator in some African country or something to, (laughs) right? I mean, think about that. It's enticing. I'll have nuclear weapons. That's a terrible idea, and but what Lukashenko is trying to do is trying to inc- increase the threat of deterrence. And um, again, Putin has deterred the West very well, uh, unfortunately. Okay, Tuesday, May thirtieth, drone attacks hit Moscow again. Um, well, so it's the first drone attack was just hitting the Kremlin. Here's drone attacks that that wave, and we're trying to figure this out for days, like what happened, and different people had different uh, theories about it. Um, Putin came, out, so I was looking at this and I was going, something is not right, something's not adding up. If it's this, then that doesn't work. If it's that, this doesn't work. So I didn't think it was a Ukrainian strike from Ukrainian soil because I, like Jake Bro talked about this, and air defense certainly would have gotten it. Air defense can't be that bad, right? And I didn't think it was a false flag because the 
the Russians would play up a false, uh, if it was a false flag, they would get a lot of press out of it, but they try to downplay it in their media. I was watching RT and reading Pravda and that kind of thing, like a hawk, and I just did, couldn't see it. Um, it looks like it's not false flag, I, and I don't know if it's partisans launching within the country or Ukraine uh, working with someone or Ukraine doing it, but I don't think it's a false flag. Um, Okay, <laughs> but it was just really weird. There was another article about how Wagner was recruiting on Twitter and Facebook, and you know those recruitment things would be taken down after some time after you know they got flagged. But yeah, okay. Wednesday, the thirty-first of May, U.S. announces more military aid, another three hundred million dollar package. Uh, Russia says that the U.S. is encouraging terrorists to strike on Moscow. You're not a terrorist if your enemy that you invaded in a time of war, you can call it a special military operation that you want, if you want, is striking your capital. Now, they shouldn't be striking a civilian population, but they weren't actually striking. You know, I thought about this at some length, and these things were sending a political message. We can get through your defenses. Your defenses are terrible, and we can get through. But they, what they should have done was drop blue blue and yellow dye on these buildings or paint or something, something like that. That would have been absolutely awesome. No charge that you're trying to actually hit us, just showing that you can do it. And yeah, Russia said on Wednesday that it sunk Ukraine's only warship on the 29th. Um, Ukraine had no Navy to speak of, but as I indicated in the community tab, uh, there was another video I did on day, I think it was 144, about how many ships Ukraine has actually sunk without a Navy. It's pretty impressive. Um, okay, on uh, Thursday, June 1st, Ukrainian soldiers are preparing to take, retake Bakhmut. They said fear is contagious, but so is courage. And that's that's the way these guys process. It's, it's really amazing. We found out that Russian missiles and drones had a 90% failure rate in uh, when they're launched from Russia into Ukraine. 90% 90, 90 failure rate. It cost $1.7 billion. Now, this was the other article I was talking about, that U.S. lawmakers are pushing for an independent international tribunal separate from the ICC. Now, there's, I think, a reason for this is that like neither Russia nor the United States uh, uh, recognizes the ICC as having binding jurisdiction over them. The United States does not want the ICC to say, U.S. soldier, you come and stand before this court. No, no, no. no. We, we prize our freedom and our independence too much to allow that international body that uh, to have that power. Um, I know some people in Europe don't understand that from an American point of view, as a conservative American particularly, that resonates with me and I get it. Um, but a Nuremberg-like independent tri tribunal totally fine with I just and I think that that is the way to move forward with that but even then I don't I don't even want that I want him to stand trial in Kiev for all his crimes um, anyway okay uh, Ukrainian incursion into Bel Belgorod again now, RT calls this a terrorist attack that they thwarted and yeah sure they did um, Another Russian bombardment of Kyiv. Finland provides six breaching vehicles, tanks with bulldozer, sh bulldozer kind of shovels on the front end to, to demine the area. Um, and we're still, again, at this point, still trying to figure out who's behind the drones. And then yesterday, just a few articles, uh, Russia thwarts the Belgorod attacks, according to the Ministry of Defense. But there's other news that they're still there, or at the same time that they were saying that, they were still out there causing havoc. Zelensky was at the Moldovian European summit doing what Zelensky does, driving up uh, uh, resources and recognition for what's going on in Ukraine, keeping it front and center. And then the last thing was Scott Ritter, and I talked about this yesterday. Go back to my last video, Scott Ritter on RT waging the peace. It was a piece of work is what it was. Um, Scott Ritter talking about, like, he... I just, I was trying to be kind, but dealing with his assumptions and saying, look, he really believes this, but is this true? Um, and I don't believe that Ritter is a grifter. I don't believe he's on the Russian payroll other than, you know, selling his books or having a warm, welcome audience. I believe, and this is far worse, he really believes this nonsense. So that's the week. I hope that that helps you. It's less than 15 minutes and you are good to go. Thank you for your time and thank you for caring about Ukraine.